Now we'll take a look at what it means to integrate security into DevOps in order to have DevSecOps. First, we have several roles that are contributing. We have teams that are setting the business requirements. They're coming up with the requirements that are going to be implemented and they're governing the process. They're also the developers, of course, and the test teams. And then there's some sort of management that is overseeing all of these different contributors. So everyone has their place in ensuring that the bugs are found as quickly as possible. And the entire project team overall is responsible to make sure the security requirements get implemented and to get them implemented before releasing the product into the production environment. Managers have an additional responsibility in that they need to identify how the bug came to be in the first place, track down the root cause, and eliminate that issue from the process so that in the future we proactively prevent the bugs rather than having to come back and fix them. Overall, Applications have to get a comprehensive security assessment during the development process. This means that we will have the proper types of assessment at the proper time in the development process in order to find the different kinds of security issues that can occur. And different types of testing are ideally suited for finding certain types of security problems as early as possible. We're going to take a look at four of them. Static application security testing tools will examine the source code and based on what they see, they can identify patterns that are well known to lead to security issues. And you can think of this as an automated peer review. This can run very early on. All we really need is some source code. So it can start from early in the project and these tools can integrate directly with the integrated development environment and keep an eye on the code as it's being written. They can also live in the code repositories and examine the code when the code is checked in. And there are all sorts of these different kinds of tools. And so you might think of some like SonarCube and Veracode that are proprietary tools. And then there's also some free available tools like the Insider CLI. Third-party library assessment might be considered another type of static assessment tool, a specific type, that checks third-party libraries. So in this space, we think of things like JFrog and Nexus, where the system is keeping track of the third-party library versions and the known vulnerabilities within those versions. By monitoring the software supply chain, these tools can alert developers about any libraries that are being integrated into the project which have known security issues, and they can also recommend an alternative library, usually a newer version of the same library, that has patched these issues. Dynamic testing means to interact with a running application. This type of assessment cannot occur as early as the static assessment can because you need a running application in order to interact with. Some examples of these type of tools would include Burp Suite Professional, which has a license, and then also the OWASP Zap, which does not require the user to purchase a license. When folks think of security assessment, they're often thinking of the DAS tools, scanners, because these are traditionally what is highly visible to development teams when they get the so-called report that they need to correct the security vulnerabilities on. But static assessment tools can produce reports also. And so both static tools and dynamic tools have the capability of delivering information directly to the development team. And the more advanced ones can even integrate with the pipeline and go ahead and automatically open tickets for the issues found. 
the instrumented security testing tools are those agents that are living on the application server alongside the application. And when the application is running, these instrumented tools have the ability to monitor the running code and they can detect when certain problems occur, sometimes even down to the individual line of code. And there are certain types of bugs that are pretty hard to confirm unless we're using an instrumented security test. But even for regular everyday security issues, instrumentation can help identify more precisely where the problem is within the application. And they also have the ability to partner with the dynamic tools in order to be able to confirm vulnerabilities. So they can help eliminate false positives by having enough information on the server side in order to confirm or refute whether or not what the DASTY scanner is seeing is actually happening on the back end. So all in all, we call this concept of doing things as early as possible shifting left. If we think of a timeline of development starting on the left side and moving through time to the right hand side, we want these security assessments to occur as fast and as early as they possibly can in order to get the information as quickly as possible so that we can take care of the problems as cheaply as we possibly can. First of all, we need to make sure that we're actually doing DevOps. Kind of goes without saying, but we need our code inside of a pipeline enabled code repository so that the tools have visibility to it. We also have to proactively prevent as many vulnerabilities as we can by having a solid architecture and also following security practices. And that way we can simply avoid having the security problem in the first place. For those issues that do make it into the development, we start with the static application security testing and we can do this very early by having those testing engines inspect the code as it's being written. And we can also bring in the third party library testing, perhaps not quite as fast, but at least as soon as we start integrating the third party libraries. So certainly by the time we get to the build or integration steps. And finally, we can do dynamic application security testing once the application has made it far enough along to where we can interact with the application. And that can be partnered with instrumented application security testing in order to get a look at the application, both from the client side point of view and also from the server side simultaneously. When we're ready to promote our code, this is the point where we would verify the code with security penetration testing. In this way, we can accomplish two goals. First is, we want to independently verify that we really did eliminate the security issues during the development pipeline. If we didn't, we would want to fix the issues. But more importantly, we would want to fix the process because we don't want to repeat that same problem next time around. The second thing that the security penetration testing offers us is a much deeper look into the application. Vulnerability assessment tools are not able to chain attacks together very well. So they can sometimes miss security issues that only happen if you combine multiple attacks together in sequence. Also, a lot of vulnerability assessment is based on patterns or signatures. If there's some type of new novel security issue that's not well understood or is a zero day or doesn't have any uh, well-developed pattern yet, then it's going to be hard for the scanning type tools to identify it and it may only be found with a security penetration test. And we have an obligation to continuously monitor the application during its lifetime. Even though the application might be spotless when it enters production, as time goes on, new security issues can be discovered and new types of attacks might be brought to bear on the application. 
So we need to co continuously keep an eye on the application to make sure that it remains secure as it runs in the production environment. If there is going to be a problem, it's probably going to happen while we're operating the application. This is the time when bug bounties happen. It's also the time when, unfortunately, security events can occur, and that can cause disruption to the system. Even accidents that are happening in production can sometimes be traced back to a security issue that was missed in the development. Sometimes users innocently trigger security vulnerabilities without meaning to, but end up causing the application to malfunction or even go offline simply because they happen to trip one of these security issues. Finally, what should we do? Well, first, again, we want to make sure we understand what the security requirements are. The goal is to avoid having security issues in the first place. We really don't set out to fix vulnerabilities. We end up fixing vulnerabilities because we were unable to proactively prevent the vulnerability. We have to make sure that we are following a DevOps model in order to have DevSecOps. And part of that means ensuring our code is available to the tools within a code repository and also following a DevOps process that integrates these testing of security in the pipeline itself. And then we start to get about the business of doing the different kinds of assessment throughout the life of the application. We start with the static assessment and fairly quickly after that, check out those third parties that are being integrated. Finally, we're able to do dynamic assessment in order to find issues that can only be found by talking to the application. And at the same time, we may even add an instrumented assessment. In true DevSecOps fashion, we're not going to promote our code until we have fixed the security issues. And perhaps most importantly of all, when we discover a security problem, we do our best to proactively prevent that problem the next time around. And so even though we might have a security problem that makes it a certain way down the DevOps cycle, we don't want to miss that learning opportunity to go back and to fix the process.